Welcome to Peg Warmers. I'm Kevin, and I'm here to talk about toys. Today on Peg Warmers, we are talking about vending at Evergreen Antiques. I did an episode quite a while ago with Jordan from GeekAnything.com about vending at toy shows, and I talked a little bit about vending at Evergreen Antiques toy show as well as a, a sale I did at my own personal house when I was getting ready to move. Uh, so it's like a year later, and I vended at Evergreen for the second time. And today, just kind of showing off the sights and sounds a little bit, talk to you a little bit about the show. There's no big haul portion of this episode because I was there to sell. I didn't buy anything. There was definitely stuff I wanted to buy, uh, but I was really trying to focus on being good that day and not bring a ton of stuff home. So I moved into my house in September. I've been working on trying to get set up down here in the basement to have my collecting space the way I want it. I did some videos about doubles in my collection. I've been really working hard to eliminate some of the clutter down here because there's a lot of bins of toys and a lot of stuff, a lot of artwork and things like that. And I'm really trying to, you know, pare it down so I can display as much of my collection as possible. So... When the show came up, I had a few totes of stuff left over from the previous time, which was all stuff I tried to sell at the house sale at my house, took it to Evergreen uh, Antiques. I did buy a collection at some point between the two shows. I hadn't really sorted through all of that yet, but I did take a few items from that. Um, there were some, like, Batmobile shells that weren't in great shape. There were... Um, there was a Hess truck and some things like that, and those all went straight to the show. Uh, there was a handful of, like, inexpensive carded items, like um, some Lego Star Wars merchandise, some, like, wristwatch, licensed wristwatches. I also thinned out my roleplay Star Wars lightsaber collection. I had, I don't know, five or six kid lightsabers, and I just decided I don't really need them anymore. Uh, they just take up a lot of space. They don't really look that great. They're not, like, the FX lightsabers or anything like that. So I took that stuff with me. I also took some books, just a whole bunch of stuff that um, I was hoping to thin out of my collection. But, you know, I didn't want to just donate it. I was hoping to make a buck or two here and there. I also thinned out my pop vinyl collection a fair amount. So Evergreen Antiques is a antique store. There's like different sections, different zones where the product in those zones are owned by different vendors. And my buddy Ed Rents, who goes by Raiders of the Lost Toys has a pretty big section there, and he organizes this toy show. It's in a back portion of the store, like a, I don't know, it's like a garage or a loading dock. Uh, it's got a disco ball, so it's kind of like a ballroom. I don't really know what they use this room for normally, uh, but he's had a couple toy shows here. There's also a comic book show that was hosted there before, uh, but Ed does a great job putting it together. Ed does a great job putting it together, and I really enjoy going to this show. Last year, the video I did on this show was purely a Patreon exclusive. So for the people that have been supporting the show for a while, you may have seen uh, the sights and sounds of this show before. Today, I'm trying to do it as a bigger, you know, full-on episode. But my buddy Mike Bro, who you've seen on this show plenty of times, uh, as well as Rose and Tony from RetroCon, they were all there in the same row as me. We're all buddies and get spots together. I'm here! I'm here! I can't wait to sell everything for the bro show because I need kitty kibble food. I need it now. Other vendors were there that I know. Will and Amy and Ben had their table. Chris Lamont had his table. And then some other vendors that I don't know so well. And right behind where I was set up was Toy Cantina, which is a toy store not too far from where I actually live. So there was lots of cool stuff on display, and I'm sure you'll get to see some clips, you know, interspersed throughout here. So what did I have on my table? Well, I brought a dollar bin. I had a lot of little tchotchkes that I wanted to get rid of. I had a bin of DVDs. I've been thinning my DVD collection down. And so some of the nerdier stuff and more 80s movies that I that I decided I don't need to own and I can watch on streaming, I took. I have not completely stripped my collection of physical media. I still have a lot of stuff. Um, but I just I needed to take up less space. So I did thin out some of the movies that either I probably don't need to see all the time or that I think are very readily available. I had a whole bunch of doubles there. There were some board games and some puzzles I talked about in the doubles episode of Peg Warmers. I took them. I was really hoping to get rid of the board games because they're bigger and bulkier. They don't really fit in a tote well. So I had uh, an incomplete copy of the G.I. Joe Commando Attack game. I had a Death Star 
you know, 70s Star Wars game, some G.I. Joe puzzles and things like that. Um, and I took some color forms. I actually thinned out my color form collection. I have color form and a color form episode here on Peg Warmers uh, that I did with Kieran a while back. I'm trying to shrink the number of brands that I'm collecting ancillary merchandise for. I love all the ancillary merchandise, tote bags and bed sheets and uh, school supplies and plates and, you know, whatever. Um, but I can't collect them for every toy line. So, you know, I'm focusing more on G.I. Joe and He-Man, um, maybe Star Wars, but, you know, trying to let go of some of that stuff. So I did sell a Ghostbuster and a Marvel uh, color form and a Bat Batman 89 color form. It it's based on the comic art, not the, um, not the movie. Uh, but you know, I, I, I did, did sell a few of those things. I got there pretty early on, plenty of time for setup. Uh, Mike Bro got there. He's setting up his table. We're waiting for our friends Rose and Tony to get there and the power goes out. Hey guys, power went out. This is a fun toy show. There's oh Mike my. from the Bro Show. Look out. You, you never know see. who you'll find in the dark. I can't see. Uh, stop groping me. I, I can't see. This is not something you want to have happen at a toy show. Better during setup than when the customers are there, but it was really kind of a mess. Uh, it turned out it was only out for about 20 minutes. It was like a car accident. Somebody hit a pole not too far away. They did get the power back on right around the time Rose and Tony got there, so they were able to get set up. Um, but we were a little nervous that the show was going to be a bust. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I actually have strawberry stretchy stuff to sell. Oh, oh no. Then they started letting people in. It was, uh, you know, an even slow trickle. I mean, it takes a little while for people to get there. Some people looked through the antique store before they came back to the toy show. They'd check in, pay their little entry fee, um, you know, to help cover the costs of, of the event, you know, advertising and all that kind of stuff. And then they, they kind of shuffle through. Um, it's not a huge room. It's sort of like one loop around, you know, double side, you know, stuff on both sides of, of that aisle. Um... I don't really know how many total vendors there were, but, you know, you kind of get a feel for it. It's kind of like a firehouse type of type of, of sale or like a hotel ballroom type of, of show, um, which are pretty common in my area compared to like the mega conventions for toys. So this is sort of a view of my table from my perspective. You can see there's a lot of stuff here. I don't know how much of that um, you'll be able to tell sold as it goes through. I put on my table a lot of stuff that I really wanted to get rid of first. I don't know if that was good or not. I saved some of my high-end things back and put out a lot of the junkier stuff, the more yard sale -y stuff, because that's what I really needed to have gone. But then I felt like as space got made on my table, the crowd dwindled some, and then the higher price point items were up, and there were less people to look at them at that point. So that may have been a mistake on my part, but I would rather keep you know, a more expensive carded thing and just hang on to it and try and sell it at a different show or directly to somebody through Facebook or something like that than necessarily put it on the table and cart home a bunch of, you know, less uh, less valuable things. I, I, was, I was going for quantity over quality on what I was trying to get rid of, sort of. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't know if that was the right idea, but that's what I did. So you may notice there's a little bit more junky stuff down now, and later on there's a few more carded things that show up. Um, just kind of kind of the way I, I tried it out. I, I've not vended at a ton of toy shows before. Um, so, you know, I, I, may, I may still be making mistakes here. Here's a quick shot of Ed's booth, the guy that ran the show. He had a lot of carded Star Wars stuff. He always has a ton of G.I. Joe things. A bunch of other odds and end toy lines, and... I was impressed with this E.T. collection he was selling. He must have recently, you know, picked up uh, an E.T. fan's collection because there was more E.T. than you usually see. You know, sometimes there's like one item from a collection or one or two items that represent a movie or something like that. But uh, this was this was a pretty robust amount. One of my favorite things I saw at this show, not really something for me to own, but just something I thought was really cool. There was somebody that was selling a lot of Disney merch, and they had a model of Starship Earth. That's the golf ball-looking building at Epcot. I thought that was pretty cool. Some of the other fun things about that day, I got to meet G.I. Joe Repair Shop. He is a friend of mine on Twitter. He posts uh, G.I. Joe stuff that he buys. He's slowly 
building a Joe collection one part at a time. He's happy to buy loose figures and accessories and vehicles that are missing pieces and put them together, and he shares that journey online. Um, great guy. It was, it was awesome to get a chance to meet him. And I also, of course, ran into Justin and Penelope from Farpoint. I didn't get a chance to film a clip with them. They were busy shopping. They were looking for things that they could sell at their store and just checking up on everybody because pretty much everybody at this show knows them. Um, you know, you don't, you don't really have a toy store in New Jersey without being known by other people in New Jersey. Antiques on the Evergreen was March 18th, 2023. I know that was a little while ago. This almost feels like lost footage contained in this episode. Um, I wanted to put this episode out right away and then something broke, like news broke or I got uh, a wave of something in and I just never got around to shooting this episode. But I do like doing these toy show videos for you guys. I think there's some value to it. Um, entertainment wise, it's just kind of fun to get to check out shows you didn't get to go to. And uh, I'm trying to, you know, show off my experience as a vendor. So by the end of the show, I had two empty bins. Um, I got rid of a couple bulky things that didn't fit in bins at all, and then I reduced down. I had two bins worth of stuff previous to this. I don't remember if I had three or four bins worth of stuff that I packed to take to the show. Um, some bins were packed tighter than others. Um, I reduced that down to um, from, I think, six bins down to four bins. And then the dollar bin... When I came home, I actually threw it out. Um, I had sold a fair amount of stuff out of it, and really the stuff that was left was really pretty junky. So I pitched that one. So I really went from six bins down to three bins, I guess. And that's pretty productive. The DVDs, um, I ended up donating them to the thrift store. You know, any ones that didn't sell to uh, fellow nerds at the toy show. I just decided they could just they could just go. I, I'm trying not to warehouse a lot of this stuff. I was really trying to, you know, make a buck or two here and there while reducing my my load as a collector. I do have plans to take some stuff to a local auction house in the near future to unload a little bit more stuff. I It was stuff I didn't take to that show. I had set a few things aside as I was um, going through stuff. And I also have a pile over here. I have like three bins worth of Power Ranger toys. I'm thinning my Power Ranger collection. I've been setting up my Lightning Collection display. Um, right now I have like a bookcase that has, oh, I don't know... Four shelves of Lightning Collection, one shelf of retro Rangers, like the head flippers and the 8-inch ones, and then two shelves at the bottom of, like, retro monsters, the vinyl guys and the little action feature guys from Mighty Morphin and things like that. Um, but I'm really, really digging having everybody sort of in one format with the Lightning Collection. So I'm kind of keeping all the monsters, but for the Rangers, I'm basically going Lightning Collection for everybody. So I have pulled out all of the other stray Power Rangers. And for a long time, I was collecting Power Rangers like crazy from the flea markets. Lots of loose, incomplete Power Ranger figures. Um, so I'm going to be getting that stuff ready to sell this summer at a show with my buddy Chris Long. And so I will definitely be doing an episode in the future about that Ranger show. Um, it's going to be at the Greater Philly Expo Center in July, I believe. Um, I'll try and put the contact information here on the screen. If you're in the area and you want to come to that show, please feel free to stop by, but don't feel like you have to if you're not a Ranger fan because um, it's a pretty dedicated Ranger show. I got to give a special shout-out to all the Patreon supporters out there. That small group of fans are helping keep this channel going by donating a couple bucks a month um, to the channel. Helps keep things rolling. They bought this mic. Uh, just kind of that, that support and that drive to keep putting content out there, um, whether it's the main content, the special content for them, um, all that stuff. I really appreciate that kind of support. Even if you can't financially support the show, please hit the like button, share this video with another toy collecting friend. That is the best way to help the channel grow. And thanks for hanging on the peg with me. <laughs>